Hi everyone, my name is Philippe. Good evening. Um, so I'm a member of the Legion of Mary in Belfast. I'm from Brazil, uh, to say. So today is going to be my first time doing it in English. So if nobody understands, I will understand. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm very, very happy to be here. Uh, I know it's my first time. But I'm very excited to talk about Our Lady because my first time I speak in book in the microphone, it was about Our Lady 10 years ago. So I'm quite happy and I want to share all this feeling, all, all this moment between us and between God and us through her. So the first time, the first thing I want to say is I was singing three weeks ago. I was um, in the meeting, the young meeting, and then when it finished, I thought, I need, I want to speak about Our Lady. And I was kind of thinking, how I would do it in the Legion? It would be very pretentious of me asking them to talk about Our Lady. So I said to my wife, but uh, I didn't know how to do it. One week uh, after that, Brother Green, a member of the Legion, said to me, they need two leaders to talk about Our Lady in Bali Manor. So, could you do that? And I, I kind of think, there is so many people in the Legion, why is asking to me? Why is he asking that to me? And then, well, I decided, I felt that in my heart before that I should speak about Our Lady. So, if he came to me with that, I'm going to do it. So I said yes. And I remember, say, in the wedding in Cana, Our Lady said to the guys, no, Our Lady said to Jesus, sorry, they have no wine. And then Jesus said, well, it's not my time yet, it's not, it's not my mouth, but she said, do whatever he says. And, and he did. And they did. And they brought the water to them, and the water became wine. So I know you were expecting a speaker today, but they sent me. <laughs> so, nothing that I can do about it, but I hope I'm coming, I'm coming like water, but I hope we can wine through our lady. Because this wine made, made people happy. Sorry, the wine made people happy. 2,000 years ago, or near there. So I hope this wine will make you have healthy, sorry, not healthy, happy to feel and live your faith. So that's the first teaching. I was here as water, and now I hope through Mary become wine for your life, not me, not for me. That's Jesus, all through Jesus. And for our lady. So, our lady, she's very, very special. And I'm going to show you throughout the Bible how she is special. And the first thing I'm going to show you is Genesis 3 15. Our lady was always in God's thought. God was always thought, thinking about our lady. Always always, ever, before, during, later, today, God is always thinking about her. And why I know that? Do you know when Adam and Eve, they fall in sin, they fell in sin, what happened? God said to them to leave the paradise, no problem, but he made a promise and he said, He said to the to the um, to the beast, to the snake, to the serpent, serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman. He did not say the women. He did not say between and the women, not our women, but between you and the woman. And that was. God's thought, 
He was thinking about her baby. And how can I prove to you? Jesus never called Mary as a mother. He called her the woman. He was thinking her two, three thousand, I think four, five thousand, seven thousand, I don't know, years ago, before she born, God was singing in our name. And Jesus was saying that to people. And John, St. John, in the Gospel, not the Gospel, but St. John from the Gospel, he knew that, he realized that, and he put that in the Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, he said, the woman, the children of woman, of that woman. So, in all the Bible, you can see that. So that's the first time that we will have a mother lady. She is the woman, and that's why Jesus said that. That's why Jesus always treat her as the woman to prevent, to pride her of her name, keep her humble, and at the same time say to them, Jesus never speak, speak something that he doesn't want to show you the gospel. He doesn't want to show you heaven. All the time when he's speaking, he's speaking about heaven and your way to be there. So that's the first thing. Then, um, sorry, when I get here, there are three remarks. Um, then we go to the Annunciation, Luke 1 28. Luke here. Luke 1 28. We said this, we see another thing, another thing about our lady, which is the virgin. So first, the first thing was the woman, now it's the virgin. And Luke was when he wrote his gospel, he was teaching to people who had never heard about actually. They had heard about Jesus, but they had never seen Jesus. They had not known Jesus. So they didn't know who Jesus was as man. So he was explaining who was Jesus to them. And then he said, because they, he knew they knew in the scriptures, and he said, the virgin was Mary. The virgin name was Mary. Luke 1 to 6. So that's the second part of our lady. She is a virgin. Promise all throughout the Bible. You can read that in everywhere. She was the virgin. And when the, when the angel said to her, when the angel said to her, that rejoice, rejoice. He had never said that before. For no one before for her, because God found grace on you. That's beautiful. Do you know what's beautiful? She never was, she was disturbed by the words not by the angel. See how it's weird? If I see an angel, I'll be very, very disturbed. I mean, I'll be very scared as well. Because it's different. I've never seen an angel in my life. But she saw. And she wasn't disturbed by what he, because he was there, but by his words. He knew what it meant. So she was trying to get the meaning, trying to realize that she was the chosen one. She was the virgin. She was preparing herself to serve the Messiah, but she realized she would be her mother. His mother. Right. I'll get there. And at the same time, she knew that she would go through the cross. Not the cross, but she knew about the suffering. She knew about the, the promise of God. She knew that she would, she would step on the, head, on the serpent's head, but she knew that the serpent would strike her on her heel, heel. So she knew that. She knew what was going on. And then she go, uh, sorry, the angel said to her that they go, uh, she needs to go to Elizabeth. No, she didn't, she didn't, he didn't say she needs to go, but he said that Elizabeth is pregnant and is waiting a baby, he's expecting a baby. Because for God, nothing is impossible. 
for nothing is impossible to God. The angel is saying that because a virgin is going to be a mother, and that an old lady who had never had a child before would have that time. And I said to you that our Lady teaches, teaches us in the scriptures. And I'm going to say to you that 2,000 years ago, she proved that since the moment of the conception, there is a life. 2,000 years ago, she moved, she was running to go to Elizabeth. I was looking on Google, 100 miles from Nazareth to Judah, 100 miles. By foot would be 20 miles a day. She took four or five days to get there. Four or five days. But as soon as she got there, Elizabeth says, Why am I honored to receive you, the mother of Jesus? Four days. Four days she was mother of Jesus. That's the third name that I'm going to give to you. Woman, virgin, and mother. Four days, four days, Jesus was there in her womb. Jesus was alive at that time. So there is no excuse, there is no explanation for that. For people today say that the conception is only three weeks, one month, two months, three, four days, he was already there, which means that he was there since the first time when the angel was saved for our lady. That's not my thesis, that's actually a doctoral thesis of a father from Brazil, he's a priest, and he's, um, he's president of the pro-life, his name is Father Rod, and he's trying to prove, first in the religion, the, first for the religion, that yes, Jesus was there in her womb, and we need to believe that life is since the conception. So, then we we'll move on, we don't have time, so I can go deeply, but um, when, when people stop Jesus and ask and say to him, blessed is the woman who feed you, and he say, no, blessed my mother, my brother, my sister are those who listen to the God's word and put in Christ. And people try to say that as Jesus was saying that we don't we don't need a lady, we don't need Mary, we don't need her as a mother. Because Jesus said that she wasn't his mother. That's not true. He was saying that she said that she lived the word of God. And many people were over here, Belfast were over here in Ireland, but in Brazil, many, many people like to say that Mary's yes is very important, and we, we need to live, and we need to say yes as Mary said yes. So, I don't believe in that. I don't agree with that, and I'm going to say why. Don't hate me, brother. <laughs> I'm going to say why. Because Mary never, has never said yes. So why people say that she said, Mary's yes is very important. Mary's, Mary's yes is, the, uh, is what we should do. If she never said that. So they go to the scriptures and they say, oh, she said yes. She said when the angels asked her if she wanted to get it, she was 14 years old, if she wanted to have Jesus, and she said yes. No, she didn't say yes. She said, be done in tonight according to thy word. She said, be done, not yes. And the priest said to me once, and I never forget, and I will never forget, that yes is human, be done divine. 
Because I can say yes. I can say yes every single day. When we are we are in the rules of the legion, we do not marry, and when we are recruiting our auxiliary members, uh, which is auxiliary members are like people who are member of the legion, but they can't go to the meeting to, to pray with us for some reason, for illness or because they live far away from everywhere, or any reason. So they can be members of the legion just do the prayers. So when we asked them to do that, they said, yes, I will do that. And after months, we phoned them to know how they are and if they are praying or not. Yes, they say no. I do that all the time. I say yes for so many things. People ask me to fast for them, to pray for them, and I say yes, 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 yes. And sometimes I just don't remember. Sometimes I just forget, or I just am not, you know, sometimes you are just weak enough to not thinking into something. But because I said yes, I should say be done. Be done. And when I say be done, I do everything what he says. Because that's what she did, that's what she teaches. When when she was in the when she was in the wedding dinner, she was saying that do whatever he says. Be done. That's very, very important. That's the way to unite ourselves with her, with Jesus. And I'm about to finish, I promise. I would like to do three more things. One, the loneliness of a donkey. When we were on the way from here, I asked Michael, Michael, I asked something about the donkey. And he said, What were we going to talk about donkeys in the church? <laughs> and how to talk about it? Could I actually have something about it? See, when Jesus was getting in Jerusalem, she, he was on a donkey. But if that donkey thought, that all those praise and all those songs and all those acclamations were to him, he would drop Jesus on the floor. He knew it wasn't to him. And that's what our name teaches us. She knew that every single praise we do to her, it's never to her because she knew that if it wasn't Jesus, we were not praising her. So when we say, I love you, I'm not saying, I'm not saying just because of her, because of her loneliness, because of her humbleness, but because she said, be done to me. Because she said yes to God in another way, in the divine way. That's why we praise her, because she is the mother of God. So that happiness is for us. If I'm saying here to you, I'm speaking here, I can't think that's myself. Because it's not. I have, no, I have never learned it, have never studied that. I have only been praying, go to mass and doing all those things. So those things taught me. It's not me, it's Jesus. The same way that when the priest is here, it's not him, it's Jesus. So we can take the praise for us. Why am I saying that? Because we need to know that we are not here for us and we are not here for anyone else but God. Only God. Only, only God. It doesn't matter if, if people use their mobiles in the mass. It doesn't matter if they are unworthy. It doesn't matter. It's you and God through Mary. It's just that. And to finish, uh, I was doing a uh, street contact with the legion in, the, in front of St. Mary's Chapel in Belfast. And a Protestant stopped me and said, We have those cards here, we're going to give them out in the, in the end. And he came back to me, he didn't say he was Protestant, I just realized because he was known in the city after that, so people said to me later. And there is here, at Fatima in 1917, Our Lady promised the grace for salvation to those who 
on the first Sunday of every month, at least five consecutive months, go to confession, receive the Holy Communion, say five decades of the Rosary, and spend 15 minutes with Our Lady meditating on the mysteries of the Rosary. And he came back to me and said, so what you are saying here is if I do all those things, I will be saved? And I say, I'm going to try to be like Jesus. Jesus never replied. He just asked again. So I asked again. I said, which are the four steps? He said, go to confession, receive her communion, say five decades, spend 15 minutes meditating in Jesus' life. I said, okay, yes, if you do those things, you'll be saved. I already say that. He was starting to get mad with me. And I said to him, but wait, see what it's actually saying here. That's the way we learn, that's the way that should be taught, that's the way that we will do. But what it's saying here is, go to confession, regret your sins, be sorry for them. Second, receive her communion, being in the presence of God, being in the presence of Jesus, receive Jesus. And the third, say the five decades of the rosary, pray, pray. And the fourth, spend 15 minutes with our lady meditating on the mysteries of the rosary, meditating on Jesus' life. And he said, so if there is no faith, there is no religion, how can I do that? How can I go to confess? How can I do those things? And he gave the example, the thief on the, on the cross. He had never had the opportunity to do all those things, and Jesus said to him, he could go to heaven. To heaven. And I said, that's right, he did all those things. First one, he was aware of his sins, was he? He said he was. He said, he said that he had done so many things wrong, so he knew that he had done something wrong. Second, receive her communion, be in the presence of God, he was the presence of God. Third one, say five decades of the rosary, he was praying because he was talking to God. Fourth, spend 15 minutes meditating on the mysteries of the rosary. He was meditating on Jesus' life because he said, These men did nothing to be here. I did. So meditating on all those things, doing all those things, yeah, you go to heaven because Jesus did that. Because our lady promised that. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The, the, the third word that I said to you was, our name was a mother. And I'm going to finish with that. Jesus said, She's mother, not on of him. Not on his mother. She is our mother. Behold your mother. Behold your child. Behold your son. So from that day, it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter if you believe or not. Take our name as your mother. Let her get you on her arms, hold you there. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Let her lady be your mother. Don't be afraid, never be afraid, because she is our mother. Jesus said that. So thank you very much. And I appreciate all your questions, and I hope you understand them. God bless you.